Yeah, and it's funny too, I'm seeing three story large apartment complex. We do have flames on the third floor balcony, impinging into the structure um, and to the roof. We're going to be on the offensive strategy. That's attack mode. So the aftermath of the bomb cyclone uh, was that the sun came out the next day, which was really nice. Yeah. A lot of the snow started melting, but one of the problems that we had uh, within our district is that the snow was not melting off the traffic lights, and that was causing a big problem for drivers around the Denver Metro. Yeah, uh, engine 22 and engine 42, which uh, both cover sections of Parker Road, responded to a bunch of car accidents within a several mile stretch and that's because the north facing traffic signals didn't melt. So even though it was blue sky, it was sunny, the snow's melting off the streets, the actual traffic signals themselves weren't visible and people weren't treating those like four-way stops and they were getting in accidents. So with uh, help from Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office, the Sheriff's Department shut down the street and the firefighters brought Brush 42 out into the street and used the booster reel from the brush truck to wash the snow and ice off of the lights so that they would actually be visible. Right, and I thought it was really neat to see uh, Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office as well as our crews for South Metro working together uh, because that it's those moments that we really get to show uh, agencies working together and being able to shut down a road and get that um, crossed off the list to make sure that all you as community members are staying safe. Uh, we thought that that was a neat opportunity to share with all of you as our subscribers. Yeah, and the way that the story came about, the lieutenant on Engine 42 uh, sent me some pictures that he had taken of the firefighters doing that. I thought that was a pretty cool story, so I sent them out on Twitter, and then that got media interest, and one of the local news stations called and said, hey, can we do a story about this? And he said, absolutely. So we met him at Station 42, and they did this story. Engine 42. It was a very busy day for South Metro Fire Rescue crews. Roads not nearly as covered in snow as the day before, but the street lights needed some help. I can't see that red. Wednesday, strong winds combined with the snow quickly covered lights and confused drivers. The crew here at Station 42 saw a crash at every intersection along the way down, which is exactly why it was so important for them to come out and spray those off. Other areas saw similar problems. Like kind of weird for me on, on the other side because I've been um, in the news industry for all this time before, but it was really great to see on this side how we can best help the media do what they need to do and help them um, with their storytelling and, and how we can uh, keep that process moving forward. On Friday afternoon, METCOM received multiple 911 calls about an apartment fire up in Station 21's first two district at Iliff and Trenton. Rescue 34, Tower 35, Ladder 12, Aurora Engine 11, Engine 22, Engine 38, Engine 42, Medic 211, Medic 21, Battalion Chief 3, Battalion Chief 5, Safety 35, Metcom Ops 3, Confirmed Multifamily Structure Fire. 22 reported heavy smoke in the air and they ended up transmitting a second alarm assignment before anybody even got on scene. And when crews got there, the sheriff's office, and it sounded like some of the witnesses were reporting that there might be people trapped in the building. So a uh, very serious situation, probably one of the most serious kinds of structure fire calls we can get, where we've got an active fire in a multifamily building and reports that there's people that might be trapped inside. Tower 35, come in. Tower 35. How's that attic looking? Can I get crews back inside and start pulling the ceiling? Okay, roof report is at the corner I'm set on, on is the Alpha Delta corner. You've got heavy attic involvement in all of these front units. All these Alpha units are heavily involved. Uh, Tower 35 does have water. You should be able to get crews in the units on the Charlie side of the breezeway. The Charlie side of the breezeway, I recommend all the Alpha side units. Safety okay, can you get a knock on it from your position right now to knock down some of that yeah. attic involvement? We'll give it a go. Down here in front of building three on the 
outside. Okay, open up for a minute and see if you have a second. Let me know. Any update on yeah, the parties that were trapped? No parties trapped. Everybody's out. As okay. far as I know, we got one firefighter transport this week. So I don't know if they was Okay. I think a leg or something. I saw him carrying it. Okay. Copy that. But no civilian injuries. No people oh, trapped that we know of. Okay. So also, why don't you send the update that incident is under control? Primary and secondary searches are clear. And then just reiterate, no civilian injuries, causes under investigation. Alright? So we ended up having a firefighter who suffered a leg injury. That firefighter was transported to the hospital, has, has since been released from the hospital and is recovering. So. Thankfully not uh, a serious injury. No community members or civilians were injured. No one was trapped like what the initial reports indicated. And the firefighters did a phenomenal job getting dogs and cats out of the building. Some of them uh, they really had to go after because they were hiding and they were scared, but they reunited all of the pets with their humans after the fact and none of the pets were injured, which was great. So the building that burned last week was adjacent to a building that burned about six weeks ago. So the damaged building over here on the right caught on fire on December 30th of 2018. I'll be here with Tower 19 from Denver. Can you confirm? It's just 21, probably. The building on the left is the one that was damaged in the fire today. But our fire investigators tell us that neither fire is suspicious and neither fire is actually related to each other. They just happen to look the same. So towards the end of the fire, we wanted to give the media an update of the information that we had so far because we were able to, to let them know what was going on through Twitter and then any phone calls that they were putting into us. But um, we also wanted to take the time to actually go on camera and give an official update for any of them that needed that information. And uh, I hopefully one day, I know I will, I will be ready for that moment. And it's kind of funny to me because uh, being a reporter formally, um, you know, I, I did a lot of those interviews on the other side of the camera. I was the one that was asking those questions. So um, for Eric, he had offered that option to me and I thought about it and um, I know I will be ready for that, um, hopefully one day soon, but it was a really good learning exercise for me. Uh, so thanks to all of our viewers. It's been awesome communicating with you and, and finding out what you like and what you'd like to see more of. So we'll definitely incorporate more of the fleet. That'll be coming up. In fact, I think we're gonna start with the fleet bureau itself and, and take you to meet some of the mechanics and see really the behind the scenes of what keeps the fleet and all the apparatus on the road. Um, so please, if you don't already subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button so that you'll keep getting notified of videos. And uh, we can't wait to show you what's coming up next.